on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo we are back for another episode review of love after lockup this is season two episode 26 love is a sickness before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit that notification button so you will know whenever i upload new content First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to my niece out there. I don't know if niece, uh, nephew, I'm not sure. I hope I get the name right. I think it's Desi Mirage. I think that's what it is. You asked Auntie what I was sipping on. So baby, let me let you know. I'm sipping on some Arbor Mist. And this is in honor of my mother. Yesterday, August 30th, marked 12 years since I lost my mother to cancer. Um, and not a day goes by that I don't think about my mama. So being that it is already Labor Day weekend, I'm celebrating the, the death of my mother by thinking of all of her, all the good memories that I had with her, sharing some of her favorite things. Last night I did a um, seafood mukbang. Hopefully I'll be uploading that soon. But I'm drinking on some Arbor Mist. I've been drinking on some damn Arbor Mist all day. But um, this episode of Love After Lock After Lockup was pretty good, as you can see. Like I said, I've been sipping on some barber bits. But this episode of Love After Lockup was very good. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm ready to give it to you. Hopefully, you are ready for the review. So let's get right on up into it, y'all. So first up, we got Cheryl and Josh. Now Cheryl is happy. She done made her way down there. She ready to go pick up her man from prison. She over there at the hotel getting all ready, y'all. She got a little dress. She probably spent her little couple of dollars on. Got her little strapped up shoes and stuff. She gonna look good when she go see her man. Y'all got her messed up. He been locked up for six years. They been together for two years, engaged for a year. She finna bing, bang, boom, put it on his ass. So she also gotta make sure she take one of the blankets from the hotel cause her and Josh wanna have their little time soon as they get up out of prison. Okay, um, Caitlin and Matt, y'all just gonna pull up on the side of the road, any dog gonna wear, just get it in. They both ready to goose. They so in love. She says she is ready to marry him the first chance she get. Why? Yes, I asked, why? Why are you in such a rush to marry this man? For what? For what? You know him in prison. You don't know this man out of prison. You need to calm down, pump the brakes, slow your roll. Hold on. Give me 50 feet. Get to know this man because you already got kids, girl. Don't be bringing this nigga around your kids and you barely just met him. She said they so in love. She, y'all, yeah, hold on. She say she went and visit him one time. This fool put his kids in a baggie, gave it to her, told her to go to the bathroom, put it up on in there so they can make a baby. You, what? Is that how y'all do it up in prison? Well, you know there was orange and new black. Yeah, I mean, girl, you like it, I love it. But y'all, she, she's excited to go see him. She's excited to go pick him up from the prison. She finally gets out there and she's waiting. Her legs is about this big. If y'all seen the episode, girl, she look like a damn ostrich. Bless her heart because her legs are so little. She looks so fresh. She looks so cold. She looked like she was hurting out there. That wind was just going to tear her ass up if it blow too damn hard. But she out there waiting on him. He finally shows up. Y'all, that dude is big. And she look kind of tall herself. But they get out. They embrace. They hug. He tell her, wrap your legs around me. She wrap a little bone legs around him. Probably digging them all in his tailbone and stuff. But y'all, that was cute. You know, she was happy to see her mind. He fresh on up out the prison. Soon as he get out, he go over there to the car. He start stripping down, changing his clothes. He like, I'm trying to get this jelly, get this painted tank tree off me. She like, fool, they up there in the watchtower looking at you. Like, I don't give a damn. They been looking at my naked ass for the last six years. I don't care. He fresh out of jail. He don't give a damn. He ready to get the, the DOC off his ass. And I don't blame him. I'd be the same doggone way. So, y'all, they get in the car. You know, they go off. She says she found a little spot on the side of a mountain somewhere where they going to get it in real quick. You better hope your ass don't get ate up by no damn bobcats or nothing out there while you're trying to goose real quick. But, hey, that was the end of them right there. It's going to be some drama with them coming up. Everything seems peaches and cream right now. But her family kind of was on to something. Because y'all going to see on the next episode. It's some crap with that. But y'all moving on from now. Next up, y'all, we got Vincent and Amber. Now, y'all look. <laughs> Let's just 
just call a spade a spade. You know what I'm saying? This relationship ain't gonna work. I'm sorry, they not gonna last. They not gonna stay. Oh, auntie giving y'all some cleavage today. Y'all see that? Let me cover that next kid's one. You know what I'm saying? She look cute though. But their relationship ain't gonna last. I'm sorry. She's just, she's not into you, Vincent. When Poppy come home? A puppy, that's her name. When Poppy come home? Because, girl, you and Vincent, mm-mm. So, y'all, they made it to the Airbnb, right? And it's nice. It's nice. It's a little setup or whatever they got. He going to try to impress her. He said that she told him she wanted to eat some red meat when she got straight up on out the penitentiary. So, this fool done went and got some, what did he get? He got pork chops and all kind of red meat. He got, he out there on the grill trying to grill it up, you know, trying to impress her. Now, mind you, he's so busy trying to impress her, he don't know how to grill. He said he relied heavily on a crock pot, which means you don't damn cook because you don't cook in the damn crock pot. The food cook itself. You just put it in there and plug it up and turn it on. But he said, I'm going to impress my prison goddess. So he don't season the damn meat. Now, that would have been a deal breaker for me right there. How you gonna call yourself out there barbecuing, cubic carring, carbacuing, and you ain't seasoning up nobody's damn meat? What the hell am I supposed to do with that? So her sister calls, she get on FaceTime with her sister, and her sister meets Vincent for the first time, whatever, so they talk whoop de woo Then she tells her sister, she like, look, look, look at me, look at me on FaceTime. Bitch, this shit is awkward as hell. That ain't what she said, but that's how she said it. She she was like, girl, this is real, real awkward. Sis was like, girl, is he weird? This is what she said. Like, I don't want to say that, but uh, it's just the address in case I don't show back up at my mother-in-law house. Y'all know where to come find me. It's not going to work between them. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. Like I said, he really trying to impress her. They have dinner, the dinner itself is very awkward. Like he was saying that he wished he could have planned things out a little better. No, you just thought that she was gonna come jump in your arms and y'all was just gonna be in love. Now she does say that he, how he is now, is completely different than what he was putting on to be when she was locked up. Now she said when he was locked up, he was very sexual, he was very strong, he was very outgoing. He made himself seem like he had all this personality about him. Now that she's out, He's just quiet, he's he's shy, he's reserved, he's not really saying much. So she really don't know what to take of this. And then on top of that, her sister let the cat out the bat. She was like, damn, you are nothing like how I expected you to look. That's messed up. In other words, she's trying to say you're ugly. And that's wrong. You don't say nobody ugly. You just say they don't favor nobody. That's what you say. You don't say they're ugly. You say they don't favor nobody. Or you say, let's say hard. So y'all, it's time to go night night. <laughs> They got two separate rooms. She already let his ass know, look here. Just cause I'm fresh up out the joint don't mean I'm finna hop in a bed with you. Again, she done had taco salad for the last four years. She ain't ready for the beef just yet. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna take her some time to work up to that. Now, she goes, before she goes in her room, you know, they give each other a hug, a little, a little peck on the kiss, I mean on the cheek, it's real awkward. Baby, she goes up in that room and she locks that door. That was smart. That would been me all day. Whether you trust him or not, chick, you better lock that damn door. You don't know. He gets to get that little itch down there and he feel like he can creep in your bed in the middle of the night. Hell no. Then you end up back in jail because you done killed this fool because he trying to get him a little nookie because he thought it was meant to go down. No, no ma'am. So she goes in there and locks that door. He goes back in his room. He was crushed. <laughs> he was crushed. He was like, well, I know sex is an important thing, but, you know, I can wait on it. I know that when that man, when the cameras left out, that boy got up in a fetal position in that bed and was sucking his thumb and he was crying. His feelings was hurt. He thought he was going to be able to put tip in. No, not tonight, play. It ain't going down like that. But... On the next couple of episodes, I seen in some previews somewhere, when puppy come home, puppy's gonna let all the puppies up on out the bag that she's scamming this dude. But you can kind of tell, she ain't into him. She not. Girl, go ahead and cut that loss now. 
Just go on, give it up, turn it loose, y'all. But we're going to move on from them. Next up, y'all, we got Lizzie and Daniel. So Daniel's mom is at the house to pick up Lizzie because Daniel finna get up out, yeah, about the penitentiary. So she's supposed to be riding down there with his mom to pick up Daniel. Now, mama gets to the house. Lizzie running late. She like, where the hell is this house at? I told her I was going to be here at 12 on the dot, not 11.59, not 12.01. Where the hell is she at? She calling her. Lizzie like, I'm on my way there. I'm sorry, my class ran late. I mean, hey, the girl can't help it if a class ran late, if that's really what happened. I mean, damn, mom, calm down. Now, then again, Lizzie, his mama don't like you. If anything else, you should have tipped on up out of class early if you could. Read a couple stop signs and some lights or something. Because his mama don't like you. This is probably a test. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, y'all got to make a four-hour drive down there together. And y'all don't like each other. That's awkward as hell. That's very, very awkward. I would have had to fake pretend, I mean, yeah, fake pretend like I was sick or something. Like, ooh, I just can't talk because every time... Every time I talk, it my stomach hurt. Oh, I can't talk every time it my stomach hurt. I had something, but if I put a hoodie on and some earphones or something, that wasn't going to work. But, baby, as soon as she got in the car, that got on the road. Mama got into her ass. Now, look at him. I done been down there to see my boy three times in the whole three years. He been locked up. Where the hell you been? How come you ain't been down there not one damn time to see my damn boy? She like, look here, mama. I got school. I work down there at the 7 Eleven. I ain't got time. To, I can't take off for work because they're, we're already short staffed as it is. And then I can't miss class because my damn professor's going to have a fool. I mean, damn, what you what you expect? What you want me to do? I'm ad libbing. But that's kind of what, that's what she wanted to say to her, though. That's what she wanted to say. Mom was like, look here. I just want to make sure that when it comes down to my son, you gonna be there, you gonna support him, and you just ain't here for the long, you know, just playing around, whoop de whoop. She like, man, if I didn't love that fool, I wouldn't be here. What are you talking about? So they get to the hotel room to check in. Mama's still going in on her. So do you really love him or what? Now, that would've got on my damn nerves. Look here. What am I gonna use him for? He ain't got nothing. I got the job. I'm going to school. He ain't got no car. He ain't got no house. He gonna live with you. So what am I using him for? Like, mama, chill out. But then again, as a mother, you want the best for your child. Her thing is, I know you used to pop pills, and he was over at your house when he got arrested. So I just want to make sure when he get out, it ain't finna be no shit, because I ain't with that shit. Which, mama, I get her. I get that all the way, because I'm a mama too. I'd be the same way, but I wouldn't be that involved. And I mean, like, damn. Girl, you ain't got no man of your own to go nag? Golly. Mama does ask her ass. So you show it ain't nothing that you got to tell him. You ain't keeping no kind of secrets. Nothing like that. Everything is good. I ain't got to worry about nothing. She like, um, no, I'm good. I'm good. We straight. Meanwhile, the heifer going to say in a green screen, she's got multiple secrets that she's been keeping from Daniel. Now, girl, his mama don't like you. And then you keeping secrets. All she got to do is find out them secrets. All you got to happen is he got to go back to his mama and say one negative thing about you. And it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. You, you ain't gonna never gonna have no peace in that relationship. Not now, never. So they finally get to the jail and they're both really, really nervous. Daniel is nervous because he said before he went into prison, he didn't have all these tats. He wasn't no look that gangster set tripping, banging thug life with all these tattoos on him. Who got tattoos? Uh, got an umbrella right here, child. And he's trying to be poetic with it. Lord, boy, he's got an umbrella right here because he said when he cried, ain't nobody there to catch his tears. And then he got a girl shooting her head out right here and a dude stabbing himself in the head. And he got love sickness on his knuckles because he said love can make you sick sometimes. The only one that made a little bit of sense is the, um, the syringe he had on his arm. That went to a lifeline because I guess he must have shoot, shot up dope. And he was just really trying to be poetic with them damn tattoos. And he, boy, boy, 
So they get there to the doggone jail. They waiting on him to go up, come out. Lizzie is nervous because she said the last time she seen him, she's gained a little bit of weight. Bitch, where? She looked pretty. You didn't gain no dick. Girl, bye. And if that boy got a problem because you didn't gain some weight since he done been away, he ain't the one for you no damn way. To hell with him and his big head ass and his crazy ass mama. So they waiting on him to come out. Anticipation is building up. Lizzie about to damn near throw up on the damn self, piss on herself and all of that. So finally, they getting ready to come out. He put his hand on the dog and then they cut away. Y'all know how we TV do. They like to give us high damn blood pressure. Why couldn't you just let that boy come through that door and at least let him hug before you cut to the damn next commercial break? Like, really, we TV? <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we got Tony and Angela. So you know they on their way to the restaurant because she asked them, you want a blowjob or you want some steak? That fool said steak. I mean, <laughs> so they on their way to the doggone restaurant. She keep bringing up sex. Every opportunity she got, she feeling on him, she touching on him. She trying to ask him, like, you want to go have a quickie in the bathroom? You want to do this? You want to do that? Every time he, she brings up sex, he figures out some kind of way to get out of it. Now, he going to give her the most lamest excuse. Go tell her, I don't see you as some two-bit whore. So, I don't want the time that you and I have sex for the first time to be something special. Boy, if you don't sit the hell up with that old bitch, you ain't pulling out that butt of that shit. He ain't into her like that. I'm sorry he is not into her like that. He's not. Now, he got to be back at the halfway house by 720. So, she's hoping after he get his beef that she going to be able to get a little bit of beef, too. You know what I'm saying? So, they get to the restaurant or whatever. She is just like, she is fascinated by him. She's like, oh, can I come sit by you? Can, yeah, I just want to come sit by you. He's like, oh, okay. So, she goes and she sits by him and the, they wait, the waitress comes and brings out the steak right here. <laughs> So they sit down eating the steak and he's describing the steak as orgasmic. Every bite he's taking is succulent. It's just like an orgasmic experience. And this is how he pop it. Mmm, it's gonna feel just like this when you and I have sex next week. And she's like, oh yeah? As in a week from today? <laughs> no, as in a week from yesterday. What you say? <laughs> he rolled for that. He pulled that in on her ass. Because, like, again, every time she try to bring up sex, I think that was his way of kind of like, look here. Just so that you don't ask me again. Ain't nothing going down. Nowhere. He didn't want nothing from her, y'all. He wanted that steak, and he wanted some clothes, and he wanted to get on back to the halfway house. Probably so he can call Tammy Lynn or whoever else it is that he messing around with. Because he just not into Angela. He's not. You need to listen to your homegirl, Brenda. Because Brenda had it down. Brenda trying to tell, because you know, Brenda been scamming on, fucking on the rich ass nigga for a while. So she already know, look here, he is using you, girl. Listen to your home, girl. So they're leaving the restaurant on their way to drop him off at the halfway house. Once again, she trying to touch and rub and feel on him. She mentioned sex again. This fool, ooh, it's so cool to be out at nighttime. I ain't been out in the nighttime in a long time. Ain't the nighttime pretty? It's just so pretty and nighty. He don't want to talk about nothing that got to do with goosing with this woman whatsoever. And she's just not picking up on it. So he's noticing, okay, time is ticking. We got to be at the halfway house by 720. GPS says 722. So I'm going to need you to mash gas while you trying to talk about getting some ass. I need to go and get on back to the doggone halfway house. Now she's telling him, look here. She already going 80 and a 65. What the hell you want me to do? She like, I'm not going to get pulled over and go to jail because you. And if we get pulled over, you can't tell them that you just got out of prison because you're going to go right back because you're supposed to be at the dog on halfway house. So they finally get there. They say their goodbyes. They kiss. He gets out the car. Y'all, she pulls off, starts chain smoking, and she lonely again. She fit to go get a pack of cores. She finna go get a carton of Marlboro Reds, and she finna call up Brenda. And they finna cry, they finna drink, they finna listen to Mary J all night. And, and she just finna be in her feelings. Poor Angela, girl. I mean, 
No, nah, it ain't. No, no. I don't see it. I don't see them being together. I'm sorry, Angela. He not that into you, girl. He is just not that into you. Moving on from there. One more for this old ditzy ass. Y'all, next up, we got old ditzy ass Lacey and Shane. Lacey sitting outside in the damn cold, freezing her nips off, waiting for Shane to get out of jail. So he finally gets out. They run, rush to each other, embrace, kiss, all of that good stuff. They hop in the car and immediately just start going at it, kissing, feeling, rubbing, touching, all of that. Now, mind you, this is their first time meeting. Now, they've been communicating for the last four months through um, letters and talking on the phone because, again, you remember she was mad at her fiance. So she was like, okay, she wanted to go be Petty Betty. So she went on, what is it, find a killer? writeakiller.com, find an inmate, whatever. She went on there, found him, started talking to him. So she's excited because he's look, he looks good. She's saying that he looks better than what she thought he was going to look. So she's excited to go ahead, get to the hotel, and get it in. Meanwhile, he calling her the love of his life. But then again, he's 21. I think we all had a love of our life when we was around 21 or somebody we thought was going to be the love of our life around then. He don't know no damn better. And he don't even know that this damn girl is playing his ass. Because mind you, fiance coming home in like two, three weeks. So she going to have to figure that shit out real quick. Y'all, so they riding in the car. And Shane is like, uh, let me see your phone. So she like, uh, okay. She give him the phone. Then he say, what's your passcode? Y'all. That caught her ass off guard. She was like, uh, 3851. He was like, nope, that ain't it. 6822. Nope, that ain't it. 9841. Nope, that ain't it. 6311. Nope, that ain't it. She like, okay, well, just give him a damn phone. Give him a damn phone. She was like, oh, <laughs> 2345. Sorry. Gives him the phone. Chai actually give him the phone. Damn phone ring. Guess who it is? Her fiance. She pulls over on the side of the road, gets out the car, answer the phone like it and hey, what's going on? Hey, what are you doing? He was like, what am I doing? What the hell is you doing? You've been avoiding my calls. You ain't been calling me. Like, what's going on? I know when you up to something. She's like, oh my God, what are you talking about? I'm not up to anything. I'm just outside. He was like, why are you outside? Because I like being outside. Like, her excuses didn't make no tips. No sense. Meanwhile, Shane is sitting in the car looking like doo -doo 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 -doo. he don't know what the hell to damn do. They ask him, don't you find it weird that she got out of the car to take a phone call? And he's like, no, I don't find it weird at all. I trust Lacey completely and I don't think she would do anything to destroy our love because she's the love of my life. He sounded so damn goofy, but again, he's 21. And she finna go put that thing, that plastic thing on his ass, because you know she all silicone. She finna go put that thing on him, had his boy sprung, knowing that she got fiance that's getting ready to come home in a couple of weeks. Y'all, she finessed her way through that damn phone call. John Hunger, he was like, how about you go do you, baby girl? He was mad. He tried to pop it on like he big papa. Boy, you behind prison walls in a penitentiary. You ain't intimidating no damn body, especially not her. She finna go get a rocks off somebody else. So, girl, he hangs up on her ass. She get back in the car smooth as a criminal like ain't a damn thing happened. She ain't say your phone call go all right. She's like, yeah, it's, just, it's complicated. I don't know if he asked her, was that your baby daddy? Like, who was that? What the hell was that? My damn child. Y'all, my child think he a ninja. My bad. He would scream at the end of the damn video. But... She finessed her way through that damn phone call, got back in the car like it wasn't nothing, told Shane it wasn't nothing. And that was the end of the episode, y'all. I can't wait for fiance to get out the penitentiary because he going to come home and he needs to check her ass. Amber and Vince, they ain't going to last. Angela and Tony, they ain't going to last. Lizzie and Daniel, his mama going to get in your ass. And where the hell was Goldie, Goldie and Andrea? That's who I was looking for. I needed my ratchet fix. They was my ratchet fix, and I didn't get my ratchet fix. I had my, my Arbor Miss ready and everything for the ratchet shit, and it didn't even happen for me. But anyways, hopefully y'all enjoyed this review. 
If you watched it, if I missed anything, if I messed anything up, please correct me down in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.